to my heart, God. <laughs> Say something. No, I'm kidding. He's always talking to me. I'm always having to arrange my life to be reminded that God is always there and He is always listening. But more than that, He is always ready, willing, and able to address those things that we don't realize that are important to Him. And maybe we've just gone off on our own way and tangent and thought, oh, I don't want to bother God with that. I mean, that's so insignificant. That surely can't be important to God. I mean, after all, doesn't he have better things to do in the universe? No. <laughs> he doesn't. As a matter of fact, you are the most important thing in the universe to him. Because he gave his only begotten son for you. Let's get real. Come on now. Get a grip. <laughs> God is interested in you. Of course, he takes care of everything else too, but that's why he's God and you're not. When you lack joy, okay, does joy seem to be a stranger to you? Maybe it's because you haven't embraced God's cross in your life. The words of huh, Yosef Trif, a 66-year-old Romanian pastor, explained it so clearly. If it weren't for communism, I would not have loved our Lord as much. I kissed the cross the communists gave me. Gave me. As you walk through the streets of Romania, you can peer through sparsely stocked storefronts. You can watch people stand in line for hours, sometimes days, to get cheese, bread, a small piece of smelly meat, the barest necessities of life. You can look at their clothes, their cars, their homes, their cities, and you think, I'm rich. <laughs> I'm blessed with God. But when you listen to their testimonies of the sufficiency of Jesus Christ in the midst of their trials, when you see their joy... You know, their kind of joy is joy in spite of circumstance. Is yours? And suddenly it hits you, you are poor. They are rich. Rich because they have known the fellowship of Christ's sufferings. Rich because of a clear conscience. They did not compromise when it would have been expedient and easy to do so. Rich because they embraced the cross with the certain knowledge that Jesus is enough. Enough for any trial for any pain, for any loss. To the Jos Constantine, a man whose countenance outshines the brilliance of his white hair, wanted us to know that his 10 years of imprisonment and his time in a work camp were the best years of his walk with the Lord. I never felt so close to him. I never felt closer to Jesus. Now I have a genuine internal desire to do good to my enemies. This is not me, but Jesus in me. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. Yet not me, but Christ lives in me. Galatians 2.20 One dear woman lost her only son in the revolution. He was 26 years old and was to have been married two days later. Can you imagine her loss and the sorrow of his bride-to-be? Can you understand her cross? Even Romika, whose face and body today bear the scars of leprosy, lights up with joy as he shares his testimony and story of months of interrogation. As he lived under the threat of imprisonment, each day he gathered his family and friends for prayer and kissed them goodbye and reported to the police, wondering if he would ever see his loved ones again. His home had been searched, everything from toys and candies to books and Bibles. Anything religious or not produced in Romania was confiscated. Finally, his trial came to an end with the revolution. Later, when Romika asked the Lord why he had permitted all this, the Lord showed him, I allowed this for two reasons. First, I want you to love the secret police as much as I love them and long to see them in heaven. I wanted you to get to know them. And secondly, because you didn't trust me when I told you not to worry, I gave you Zechariah 10.5. They will be as mighty men treading down the enemy in the mire of the streets in battle, and they will fight, for the Lord will be with them, and the riders on horses will be put to shame. Since the revolution, members of the secret police are getting Romika openly, and God is giving him the opportunity to share with them because he now knows who they are. Tudios and Romika are men who radiate joy because they have been embraced the cross of Jesus Christ, as our Lord did. 
for the joy set before him. Well, beloved, if you are lacking joy, it might be because you are failing to walk in the sweetness of faith's obedience, which counts it all joy when it encounters various trials. Kiss your cross. It's from God's sovereign hand. There's a purpose in it all. Your Christ-likeness. And remember, weeping may last for the night, but a shout of joy comes in the morning. <laughs> or joy. You know, I am totally amazed. As a matter of fact, I'm not just amazed. I am completely, at times, aggravated, frustrated, challenged, provoked, even put out by the very fact that in America, there comes often in Christendom, in the entire world of Christianity, this whole aspect that we can hate, that we can fight, that we can politicize, that we can divide, that we can conquer, that we can go forward and act as though we aren't Christians and we aren't supposed to love some of the people that are put in authority above us. That we can somehow get away with it, that somehow there are isn't that calling of God on our lives to share the gospel with even the most person that we think is the most despicable in our lives, which they aren't, because the most despicable person in your life is yourself. So whenever you think that there's someone that you can hate, there's someone that you can despise, when there's someone that you think that there's absolutely no way you could love, whether it be a president, whether it be a dictator, whether it be a tyrant, whether it be any other human being who was created in the image of God, whom God so loved that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life, whom Jesus said, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do, whom God himself has called each and every individual believer to love because damnation was never intended for any humanity at all that they should ever wind up in the lake of fire. And you tell me that we have an opportunity to hate or to be aggravated or to be doing anything else except for praying and sharing and caring for that very individual who could come to salvation and be eternally with God? And you say, no, I have a right. I have a freedom. I can exercise my ability to hate. No. That's not Jesus. If Jesus was a political activist, Israel would have been delivered from Rome. If Jesus was a political activist, we would have the kingdom of heaven on earth now. And we do, whether you know it or not. I'm living in the kingdom. I am existing. My citizenship is in heaven. My kingdom is here. It's all about me. My fellow kingdom participants are all brethren that I love and I care for. And they too likewise pray and care for me and we declare that kingdom to the world that they should no longer be divided by political boundaries and idealisms and things that separate them unto all these wild ideas that they have that they can rule themselves when in reality God is calling desperately out to them. Now is the day of salvation. What are we doing with our time? It is the latter days. What are we doing with this message we have? Are we creating a worldview? I'm sorry, but my Christian worldview is a heavenly view. And there is no such thing as a worldview except that this world is passing away in the lust thereof. And your commandment from God was to go out and to teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and to cause them to know what it is their destiny is in heaven, not here on earth. This is not your home. This was never meant to be a resting place for you to build up a little sand kingdom so that you could play God and develop your own little world and have your own little patios. Like, you know, this is, believe it or not, a patio, but boy, if you could see what it's made out of. <laughs> Thank you, Lord, for what you gave me, but it's all impoverished materials. But we should be willing to give up our lives of everything we own and possess, like like was shared in the devotional for the sake of saving one soul that that man said the secret police that tortured him were the very ones that God sent for him to witness to and to share the love of God. Are we rich? I don't think so. I think we are the least in the kingdom of heaven. Because how dare we criticize a president, a politician, 
a person, a pastor, any other person that's around us, except that we share the love of God with them. And we pray for them. And we care for them. And we lay down our lives for them. Because, yes, he's heavy, but he is my brother.